What is up everyone, Munching Orange here, and welcome back to Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. Last episode, we took down the Cerulean City Gym Leader, the Water Type Expert Misty, and today we're going to be heading up to the north across the Nugget Bridge, and hopefully to Bill's house, because apparently there's a rumor of a talking Pokemon over there. Either that or our rival is crazy, but as you can see, we've got our little Alolan Rattata here, which we got last episode as well. Uh, not going to be adding it to the team officially or anything, but I mean, in this game, I just like having random Pokemon just for the sake that they can follow you and they look really cool. Uh, but before we head on and take on the Nugget Bridge, and I keep changing the music on accident, I do finally want to take a look at the co-op feature. So if you connect a uh, second Joy-Con, which I'm going to do right now, and then shake it up, Bam! You can actually add a second player at any point and they actually can't interact with people or anything and if you want to you could actually just make her run all the way off screen which is pretty funny. Uh, so we'll just leave her over there and oh never mind I guess it doesn't work that way but uh, yeah you can actually play this game completely co-op and it does make it a little bit even easier than it already is as you can take on every battle I believe as a double battle or a tag battle. I mean why don't we just find out? People call this the Nugget Bridge beat us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Think you got what it takes? I guess we'll find out. And if you guys are excited for another episode, make sure to hit that like button, show your support for the series and the channel. And let's get to it as we've got Bug Catcher Kale and you can see uh, both of our trainers there. So I guess it's a little bit of cheating considering I don't actually have anyone else here playing co-op with me. Uh, but you can literally do this at any point considering every Switch should have two Joy-Cons. Just connect your secondary one shake it up and uh yeah i guess you can just destroy oh actually have to use the other joy con i was like why is nothing happening i'm pushing a and nothing's happening but i guess you got to have a little bit of uh coordination between both of your hands i mean isn't that pretty much everybody i don't know but uh we don't even need both pokemon apparently as eevee just destroys this little dude's venonat and that's actually the first venonat i believe was seen uh but we can definitely find some in this route but before we can find any Pokemon, actually, we've got to make it past the Nugget Bridges barrage of battles here. Starting off with this last, as our little co-op partner is going to try to run ahead, but you can't even take on trainers as the second player, so I don't think that's going to work out. But we've got five back-to-back-to-back-to-back-to-back to back to back to back to back to back battles are in our way from us getting all sorts of awesome Pokemon, like Psyduck, actually, you can also find on this route. And a very special Pokemon, which I'm sure you guys have already been spoiled by in the thumbnail, but I won't spoil it for you right now. Just just wait in the video and we'll see what happens. As I just actually went for Ember on Psyduck. I, I don't know why I did that, but I keep getting confused because you don't actually have to select your target like in a normal double battle. And that's because it's not really a double battle. It's a two-on-one battle, uh, making it just a whole bunch easier for you, except that we're still destroying these Pokemon in one headbutt. Uh, Eevee's just way too powerful right now. And I haven't even used any candies on it either. Like, you can actually use uh, the candies you get from sending Pokemon back to Professor Oak and power up your Pokemon to make them even stronger. So that's a feature I still haven't really checked out because I feel like uh, we've been breezing through the game and, I mean, pretty much one-shotting everything. So we don't really need more power, but uh, maybe once we get closer to the Pokemon League or maybe some more challenging gym leaders might start powering up some Pokemon. I guess it's because we keep catching a lot of stuff, and catching does give experience in this game as well. Um, so, I would say actually you get more experience from catching Pokemon, especially if you get like a combo going. So even if you fight like every single trainer in this game, you might actually still end up a little bit under leveled if you're not catching Pokemon as well. Uh, but since we're doing everything and trying to get the Pokedex filled up, we are definitely going to be gaining a whole bunch of experience. And that's already three down. Two more to go. We've got another last over here. I'm number four, getting tired. I mean, so far you guys haven't even laid a scratch on me, so not exactly. Las Aureli, or is it really a rely? I, I don't know, but she's got a Meowth. Wow, everybody in this route so far has Pokemon that you can actually catch in this route as well, which I guess makes sense, uh, but I guess, I don't know, I wasn't expecting it or I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest. I never... It's not like you can predict what Pokemon trainers are going to have before you enter the route. But uh, Meowth goes for the fake out there. And guess what? We still got Fuego, so don't matter to me. Except that I use Scratch. If I went for Ember, it probably would have one-shot the Meowth. Well, maybe not. I mean, it is level 10, so I'm not sure. Fuego is already a Charmeleon and almost like level 20. So we're like doubling up on 
pretty much the trainers in this route, uh, which is kind of making me want to go pull out some different Pokemon from our box, maybe train them up a little bit, because uh, Yegdip, as you saw there, gained another level already at 20, so um, maybe in a little bit I'll check out our box and uh, swap out our Pokemon. I mean, we do have a Alolan Rattata right now, you know, maybe we could use him in a couple of battles, because I'm pretty sure they keep the levels in this game, like, around the same as the levels of the wild Pokemon, so if you wanted to, like, add something to your team, uh, you can instantly start using it in battle, and here is actually a Pokemon that you can't find on this route, at least as far as I know, and that is Growlithe, um, but hopefully we can find one for ourselves sooner or later, unless it's actually version exclusive, I don't think so though, I know Volpix is a version exclusive, which makes me think that Growlithe probably is as well, uh, and that means you can only find it in Let's Go Pikachu, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves, we're on Route 24 and 25 right now, before we move on to the, uh, Vermilion City route, whatever number that is, probably five or six, I don't know. I think it was in Hoenn that they started doing that, like they just started over from Route 201 or 101 or something, but congratulations, you beat our five trainers, you just earned a fabulous prize. And of course it's the Nugget Bridge, so we get ourselves a Nugget from the Mysterious Trainer. By the way, kid, how would you like to join Team Rocket? Wait, what? That's right. Huh? This dude just change in front of us, or we're a group dedicated to doing evil using Pokemon. Want to join? Are you sure? Come on, join us! I'm telling you to join! Okay, you need convincing. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Who? Man, I am shaking in my boots right now, and I ain't even wearing boots. But Team Rocket Grunt is gonna be challenging us here. I guess if we lose this battle, we're forced to join. We got no choice, so let's see how it goes with Fuego and Darwin. It's so awesome seeing these two Pokemon tag teaming up right now. Uh, of course, two Pokemon that are basically have a lot of history here on my channel. Um, I was actually thinking about the other day, like my favorite Pokemon, because um, I have a top 10 video from like a couple of years ago. Well, actually more than a couple now, but uh, my top 10 favorite Pokemon list has definitely changed throughout time. and. Since I made that list, I'm pretty sure two more generations of Pokemon have come out, so that list has definitely changed already, but it's really hard to say. I guess, like, my favorite Pokemon changes a lot, depending on, like, I don't know, I guess the mood or, like, the month or what games I've been playing recently. Like, I would say Stunfisk is definitely up there as one of my favorites, even though it's kind of like a troll pick, but I don't know if it would be my favorite exactly. I still really like Monferno and Infernape, so... Uh, might be interesting to one day revisit that top 10, you know, do the remix or reboot. With your skills, you could become a top leader in Team Rocket. Come on, think of the opportunity. You shouldn't let a chance like this pass by. Guess it's too late now because you just disappeared, bro. You didn't even give me the chance. What if I actually wanted to join Team Rocket, you know? It's not like there was ever a yes or no option, but... Man, controlling both characters is actually a little bit weird. I keep getting confused, but... uh. Over here, as you can see, is a man with a Charmander next to him, and much like the lady we met last episode with uh, the Bulbasaur in her house, he will actually give this Charmander over to you if you've got a certain number of Pokemon. And, uh, looks like we do! The number is 68! Cool! I want you to have this Charmander, will you take it? Not yet, my dude, I've got my own Fuego to take care of, but we'll come back uh, and get that Charmander soon enough, probably in the next episode, actually, but... Even though I want to show off what catching Pokemon looks like in co-op, um, that's not exactly the Pokemon I was looking for, so let's just... <gasps> Ooh, a Meowth just appeared! Awesome! I did mention that uh, he's in this route, and he's actually an exclusive to Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, so... In Let's Go Pikachu, you can't find this little guy, uh, and there's actually no version exclusive in this route, I believe. But I mean, that makes up for the fact that there were two version exclusive back before, like, Mount Moon. Anyway, as you can see, you've got two menus now. Uh, I guess the other co-op person can use the bag too? I didn't even realize that, but I guess it makes sense. Anyway, we're just gonna get them both ready and try to toss at the same time. Fusion! Ha! You get the masterful Pokeball. Not quite the Master Ball, you know, that's, that's an instant catch. But I mean, might as well be, because we did instant catch the Meowth there. And with that animation, it almost makes it look like... You cannot possibly fail to catch them, but you definitely can, guys. Um, I do think, though, you get more experience for doing, like, the double catch like that at the same time. 
and we'll find out uh, as soon as we register Meowth in the Pokedex, I guess. Appears to be more active at night. It loves round and shiny things. It can't stop itself from picking them up and then throwing them at people, apparently. Because uh, Meowth loves that payday move, and it's literally just throwing money at people. But, ooh, a Venonat. That is definitely a new Pokemon as well. And one that I've been wanting to catch for a little while because I think it has a really funny uh, walking animation. I don't know if it's exactly Venonat, but... Oh, there we go, right in the middle. Bam! Fusion, ha! Huh? On the Pokeballs. And I actually haven't been paying attention, but I don't think it takes up two Pokeballs either, like, from your bag. So, overall, this is just, if you want to get even more experience, uh, you can use this method. I mean, anybody can do this, even if you don't actually have friends like me. Um, you can, you know, just, just use both controllers yourself. No one's judging. No one's looking. I won't judge you. I mean, I'm doing it myself right now. But, little Eevee is learning Swift right now. And I think I'm good with Headbutt, actually, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, keep our old moves. As our little Alolan Rattata also gains a level, and we get to register Venonat in the Pokedex. Its large eyes act as a radar. In a bright place, you can see that they're clusters of many tiny eyes. That sounds kind of gross, actually. And I wonder if that's how gnats or, like, moths are in real life, because I know they got some pretty creepy-looking eyes, but I've never really looked at them up close. Who would? That's like, at least for me, bugs are like, kind of, well not gross, but they're creepy. Like, I don't really like getting too close to them. Even though they can't really do much to you unless they like, bite, but... It's just one of those things, you know? It's like a common human fear, like... I know it's not for everybody, and I mean, I might be kind of a scaredy cat for being like that with, you know, little tiny insects, but... I don't know, I feel like at the same time it's pretty normal to be scared of bugs, and especially creepy looking ones with tons of tiny little eyes. Camp for Shane though, did not put up much of a fight though. I thought not! And now we can move on to the next part of this route. Ooh, I actually just realized that the girl's got her own Pikachu running with her. How did it take me that long to notice? Like, we've actually got three Pokemon running outside of their uh, Pokeball right now, which is really awesome. Eevee, of course, stays with you, or Pikachu if you're playing that version. It will stay with you forever, even if you, like, actually take it out of your Pokemon party. But here is Psyduck, another new Pokemon in this route, and actually one I've been looking forward to catching because... Psyai! <laughs> it literally does the, like, headache motion. I love that, but... Alright, we got 21 Pokeballs right now. Whoa! That actually looked like it was just one Pokeball from the beginning, just used up. Which is kind of weird, but I guess it was still two. Oh, okay. Well, Psyduck is actually kind of feisty, and we do have 19 right now, so never mind. It takes up double the Pokeballs. You know what? I'm going to just start... What? Wow, well, that sucked. I'm going to just start throwing one from now on, you know, because apparently it does take up two Pokeballs. I was not aware of that, but I guess it totally makes sense since, you know, you've got two separate menus, two separate bags and all that, but you share them. So technically, you don't have two bags. I mean, you do, but you share the items. So, yeah. Ray is going to gain a level off of that. And now Psyduck's going in the Pokedex. Always tormented by headaches. Uses psychic powers, but whether it intends to do so is not known. That's right. Psyduck's literally one of my favorite Pokemon from the original uh, Pokemon anime. Or I guess season one of the anime. And, uh... Another one just popped up, so we might as well get a little combo going. And the reason I want to start a combo is because there's a special Pokemon here, much like Charmander and Bulbasaur before, uh, which will only appear, or I guess it's more rare to spawn, so if you get a little combo going, it'll make that a little bit easier. I've heard that you can also use lures, and I've actually never used a lure before, so might as well try it out now. We've got two of them, uh, so let's just use one, and this will make wild Pokemon more likely to appear. Already we got a Pidgey there. Uh, Bellsprout apparently. I didn't even know you could find that here. So I'm guessing you can actually find Oddish here as well, which is actually a version exclusive to Pikachu. So I lied earlier, but I guess I meant no new Pokemon. And whoa! Alright, we gotta get rid of this girl. You know, I'm done. Uh, here's another Psyduck. Still no sign of Squirtle though. Spoilers, by the way. Love me some Psyduck, man. It's just so funny in the anime, you know, how it always have its headaches and literally you wouldn't know uh, when an attack was coming. Or I guess you did know. Whenever that headache happened, a big ol' psychic blast was coming out. 
Uh, and, oh, I was actually wondering how the lure works, because the effects have already worn off. So, you know what? I guess I won't spray another one, since that didn't seem to do much. Uh, maybe I'll save it for when we actually get a bigger streak going with Psyduck. But, yeah, I guess uh, we'll move on then to the rest of this route and over to Bill's house. I just got down from Mount Moon, but I still got gas in the tank. Oh, good thing you saved some, because this battle is about to basically use it all up, man. Hiker Franklin. I still can't get over those hats, man. They're just so funny, but whoa! Onyx is coming out here. I was about to say Geodude, but that is definitely a little bit bigger than a Geodude, and that's quite a close-up of Fuego there. It's time, Darwin! You're pretty much the only one that can really handle rock types right now. I guess there's Caesar actually, also, but Caesar doesn't really do quite as much damage, and I'm pretty sure a double kick in will just destroy this guy. Oh, Ooh, wait a second, what? The rage is building! Oh no, that means Double Kick was actually a bad idea to use right here. Uh, is it gonna lash out right now? Oh, never mind. I don't actually know how rage works then. Never really used that attack myself all that often. But it looked like it raised his attack stat or something. I don't think it really did though, because that rock throw would have hurt more. Unless we're actually just that overleveled right now. I mean, we're 21. I'm pretty sure that Onyx was like... 10 or 12 or something, but anyway, that's it for Mr. Franklin. Sure worked hard. On what though, I'm not too sure about, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna swap up. I'm thinking Caesar might not be a bad idea for this route. I mean, who knows what's coming up really, but whoa, somehow we avoided that youngster right there. Oh my, there's a Pokeball right there. I was trying to get it, but for some reason it didn't work. I was pushing A, but I wonder what kind of trainer class this is. I'm guessing a bird keeper? Oh, it's Joey. What? He's all grown up? He's moved on from Rattatas to Pidgeys? That is awesome, dude. My boy Joey's all grown up. Of course, this isn't really the same Joey. And of course, he's got a Pidgeotto, which is the perfect Pokemon to counter Caesar. Good thing we got Ray on our team. And I sure wish we could actually give uh, this Pikachu a little hairstyle. If you guys missed the last episode, definitely check it out as I struggled to try and give Eevee and Pikachu an Afro. It's pretty funny, but I still haven't been able to do it. I literally have no idea how it works. Um, you still, you can't do it except for your partner Pokemon. So this Pikachu here is, I guess, stuck having its regular old hairstyle. And Pidgeotto just loves these sand attacks, man. Youngster Joey, doesn't matter if he's a youngster or a bird keeper. He's just always about being annoying, I guess. And now goes for the quick attack. I really hope we hit our Thundershock. Yes, good stuff. That's gonna- What? Are you kidding me? How did that not finish it off? Alright, you know what? Thankfully, we still got Quick Attack on Ray, and of course it avoids it. Uh, I was gonna say, we got rid of Quick Attack on Darwin, but we still got it on little Ray here, so please, just hit one! Oh my gosh. Is this thing- Wow. A Junkster Joey's actually about to beat us. If we don't hit this Quick Attack, but we do, thankfully, Ray comes through. And that's going to be it for the Pidgeotto. Youngster Joey actually putting up a lot more of a fight than I thought. I guess because he's not actually a youngster anymore. I keep calling him that, but he's all grown up like that one season of Rugrats into a bird keeper now. You're decent. Not quite top percentage though, if you know what I'm saying. Haven't heard that before. Or maybe I have. I don't know. But now we can actually grab this item, which is a super potion. And just for the sake of... Wow. Never mind, I guess that youngster just gonna keep avoiding us, so I'm gonna avoid him then. And uh, we'll take on another hiker. I'm off to see that Pokemon fanatic guy at the cape. What cape? You're not wearing a cape. What are you talking about? I'm just kidding. I know what a cape is. Well, I don't literally know what a cape is. Like, I probably couldn't define it, but I know what he's talking about. The Cerulean Cape is the area that Bill's house is at. Uh, all separate from society. Like, how come Bill gets to have a house away from everybody, you know? That seems like the life in the Pokemon world, honestly. Like, just living out away from, you know, the hustle and bustle. You get to see so many more Pokemon, obviously, since you're in the wild. Literally where they spawn. Uh, which I guess makes sense, since he is the Pokemon fanatic. Whatever that means. I guess like a super fan? It's not really like a professor, but... I always thought of Bill kind of like a professor as well. Since I think he invented the box system and... You gotta be pretty smart to do that. But we got a Machop out here, which is actually the first time I believe we're fighting a Machop. Haven't run into one just yet in the wild, but it will get Vine Whip to shape, 
literally that time, uh, since, you know, Machop is all about getting into shape. Gotta whip him up a little bit. I don't know why that's literally, because people don't get whipped. Why is that a saying, actually? I always question myself when I say these, like, really common sayings, and then you actually put a little bit of thought into it, and you're like, how come this is actually a saying? Like, they never make any sense. But I guess because they're not meant to be taken seriously, or literally. Uh, anyway, we got Picnicker Kelsey out here, who was bragging about her boyfriend. I'm pretty sure it's the dude that was literally right across from her, so we'll find out after we whip Goldeen into shape this time. And I'm probably just gonna start, or stop saying that saying, because if it doesn't make sense in my head, why am I even saying it, you know? Anyway, uh, we do have her boyfriend over here. Who is also going to be, or Camper Dustin. Wait, so how come the boys are campers, but the girls are picnickers? What's up with that? Whoa, he's got a Squirtle actually. Awesome. I wish we would have found a Squirtle of our own already. Because we would have been uh, getting some experience for it. But I'm not sure if I'm officially keeping all of the Kanto starters on my team. I know I want to keep at least one of them. Uh, and maybe some of you guys have been thinking, like, my team is looking pretty generic so far with... Uh, basically five starter Pokemon and then a random tagging along, in this case, Rattata, but it's not my finalized team. Trust me, guys, I'm gonna eventually choose from some other Pokemon. I guess I just haven't really caught anything that's super caught my interest just yet, but maybe that's because it's Kanto, you know, and I've seen all the Pokemon before, so it's not like anything's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. That is another saying that's just, I guess, not that weird. A sore thumb does definitely stick out. But I've never had a sore thumb. Like, how does your thumb even get sore? Again, if you start thinking too much or literally about these sayings, they just don't make any sense. But, uh, should I take on the last? Nah, let's just move on to the fisherman over here. You're gonna see Bill first. We battle! Okay, man. Don't have to be so angry about it. Although, well, I guess I made him kind of angry, but whoa! Okay, his face definitely confirms it. Angry old man Wayne is out here. Dang, he's got some uh, bags under his eyes there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if they're bags or just because he's like a little older, but he looks angry, man. And <laughs> I would be angry too if my only Pokemon was a Magikarp. Oh, wait, no, he's got two of them. I really hope it's not another Magikarp, though. Like, I have a feeling it is going to be, but I'm just, I'm hopeful. Oh, and it's actually Krabby. Okay, Fisherman Wayne out here. Proven to us that he's not quite as newbie as we thought. Uh, but this actually makes me wonder if there even is fishing in this game. Because I'm pretty sure there isn't. But there's still fishermen trainers. Which is kind of weird. I mean, not really. You know, you're not just going to remove an entire trainer class from the game. You know, we don't got bikes. We don't got fishing rods. Is this even a real Pokemon game? It's Let's Go. That's the real answer. You're something. And you're not much. I didn't want to say nothing, you know, I'm not gonna crush the poor old man's spirits. I mean, clearly he just still enjoys Pokemon battling despite his age, which I admire. Honestly, try to enjoy things as long as you can. Once you stop enjoying the little things or the things you've always enjoyed, I think that's where it starts going downhill. But over here, we've got a coach trainer. We haven't fought one of these in a little bit now. Uh, and actually the first female one. This area is popular for dates. I am proudly an independent coach trainer at a date spot. They really made the joke, the independent woman. All right, I'll let you know I'm pretty strong. Literally the independent strong coach woman is here to battle us and she's gonna give us a real workout. So I'm excited to see what kind of Pokemon she's actually got uh, since these coach trainers are clearly a whole lot stronger than the regular trainers and it is Trainer Amala. I like that name, and I love the character model, actually, for the female coach. Definitely like it a lot more than the boy one. Uh, but anyway, she's got Machop, actually, which we did fight earlier. I'm wondering if she's going to have, like, some kind of special strategy with it. Because my special strategy is going to be to poison it and then whittle it down with Leech Seed 2. And, oh, the Seismic Toss. Whoa! What was that? That animation was crazy, bro. Like, uh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and switch out to Yeg Dip real quick since Caesars is literally about to faint. I don't think we can take another Seismic Toss, dude. That thing literally threw us into space and back. And I gotta say, I want to see that animation again. There we go. Amala's providing us with it. Ooh, that was so crazy. 
Especially because I'm pretty sure I just saw Florida in there. Like, was that just me? Or does the Pokemon world look a lot more like the real world lately? Like, back in the day, they would show maps of the Pokemon world, and it would just be its own world, you know? Like, a completely different planet than ours, but I feel like as the Pokemon games go on, uh, the closer it becomes to our world. Am I the one who was coached? Oh, that face, man. It's gotta be my favorite trainer so far. It's close up there with uh, the Team Rocket female grunt, but I haven't had fun like that in a long time. Here, take this. And we actually get Seismic Toss. That's so awesome. That's probably like the best move animation ever so far, at least. It deals damage equal to the level of the Pokemon that uses the move. Hey, you know, if you ever want to not be an independent or just not a single independent strong woman, hit me up, Amala. Wait, I'm not available. Not me. I meant my trainer. Because me, I'm not anymore. So, anyway, we've made it to Bill's house. But it looks like the man himself is nowhere to be found. It's quite a mess in here, too. And Eevee excitedly jumps off our head. I wonder what's going on here. I've actually been really excited to see this cutscene because... Oh, this is why the talking Pokemon and standing too? Hiya, I'm a Pokemon. No, no, I mean, I'm Bill. Call me Bill. I'm a true blue Pokemon fanatic. Hey, what's with that skeptical look? I'm not joshing you, pal. I screwed up an experiment and got combined with a Pokemon. So how about it? Help me out here. So Bill is basically the Shao Tucker of Pokemon. This dude is just doing some messed up Chimera-like experiments trying to make Pokemon talk. At least he's not doing it to his daughter. That was the really messed up part. Shoutouts to Full Metal Alchemist, best anime out there. But how about it? Help me out here. Yes, I'm going to climb inside the teleporter. So you run the cell separation system for me. You can do it from that PC over there. Yeah, just trust a kid with this complicated supercomputer. I'm counting on you, pal. Oh, no problem, dude. I mean, I'm only 11 and use the internet like twice to upload Meowth memes, but let's try it. The screen says something about a teleporter. That's good enough. I should get in there. Don't mess this up, okay? I mean, the fact that you're trusting me with your life, Bill, a random kid that just walked into your house is a little bit sketchy, but I mean, he is a scientist at heart and experimenting is life. So here we go. Oh, Evie's so excited. Holy moly. My bad, Bill. Or is it? Yo! Bill actually looks so cool. Like, I was not expecting that. Yeehaw! Thanks, bud. I owe you one. Hey, you've got your Pokemon box right there in your bag. Good job! If you ever catch too many Pokemon and your box gets full, send some of those Pokemon to Professor Oak. I bet he'd be mighty thankful. Oh, look at me. I'd forget my own head if it weren't attached. I should do something to thank you, too. You did save me, after all. Here, maybe this'll do. And we get the SS tickets. So that's why we needed to come here. That cruise ship, the SS Anne, pulls into port in Vermilion City. They invited me to some party on board, but I can't stand fancy gatherings. Why don't you go instead of me? There are a couple of tickets in there, so have fun with a friend or something. I don't have any friends. Thanks for rubbing it in, everyone in the Pokemon world, but that's not true because we do have one friend. And it's Eevee! What? What was that face? <laughs> Completely surprised that Bill emerged from the smoke. And I love how Bill's just chilling in the background while we, like, pet our Eevee. That's one thing that I gotta say is pretty cool about this game. No matter where uh, you decide to open up the play feature, you'll see the actual background that you're in, including bill right there uh which is pretty awesome but i guess that's it for bill's house there's not really much else to do here there's a blanket hanging off the sofa for some reason i mean the reason should be pretty obvious my boy bill doesn't have a bed in here and clearly he spends like all his time can i go in the machine i've always wanted to try that out in real life i mean you know i'd, I'd rather be a pokemon than a person duh but what pokemon would i be hmm that's a good common question actually if you guys somehow got stuck being a Pokemon like Bill and you lived in the Pokemon world because clearly it can't happen in real life um, Which Pokemon would you be 
Or which one would you mind not being stuck as, I guess? I guess if it was Kanto, I'd probably choose Charizard. Or maybe Mewtwo, actually. But Mewtwo's like kind of a cop-out answer, like a no-brainer, you know? Why wouldn't you be Mewtwo? It can, after all, uh, telepathically communicate still, so you wouldn't really... What the heck? How are you not seeing me? These trainers, dude, they must all have like... What is it, nearsighted vision? I mean, I have that too, but none of them have glasses, so... Clearly, they just can't tell a Pokemon apart from a person. I just walked right by her and didn't even bat an eye, but uh, she's actually just got an Oddish, so... And last Haley goes down. She actually had a second Pokemon, which was just a Pidgey, so really not too much harder to take down. But another pretty obvious answer, I guess, would be Ditto, since it can transform into any other Pokemon, so, you know, you could technically be every Pokemon by just being one. Um, but if I didn't have to go for a cop-out answer, I would probably have to go Charizard, just because who doesn't want to be a fire-breathing flying dragon? And hey, it's Dan, aka A-Drive, with the Ekans out here. And Lil Dan's second Pokemon was Rattata. Went down really quickly there, like, that was actually a little bit too quick. I was surprised. I'm not mad. I mean, you can't be mad with Weedle on your shirt, you know? Which is funny, because I think A-Drive actually found a shiny Weedle uh, in his own playthrough as well. I mean, I think he's doing a shiny exclusive playthrough, or maybe it was at random. I'm not sure, but I say it's funny because we, of course, also ran into a shiny Weedle, or I guess I did, in an alternate timeline now since I had to restart my game. But whoa, this dude's actually got a new Pokemon here in Diglady, Diglady. No trio, though. Um, but can we actually take it down in one hit? Because Caesar is pretty low health. And oh. okay, never mind then. <laughs> Guess that's all the trainers now defeated on this route. So I'm gonna do a little bit of backtracking back to Bill's house because I think there's a shortcut that leads us back, and there might be an item that we missed or something. I really hope there's an item because I walked all the way back here thinking there might be one. And if there isn't now, I'm gonna be very, very mad or just mildly infuriated, honestly. But. At least, uh, little Rattata here found something in the plants. A silver raspberry, what? What is a silver berry? Probably like a stronger version of it, like, ooh, I like how there was a slope right there, actually, that's pretty cool. Depth in a Pokemon game, or like, height, I guess? I, I don't know if that makes sense, but... Whoa! Give me back my Pokeball! What? A Squirtle? Squirtle, squirt! Oh, how could it do such a thing? I need to keep an eye on this house. Get back here! What the heck? That was so cool. Was that actually a Squirtle Squad Squirtle there? Well, at least now we know that the house is unlocked. And now that we saw that Squirtle in action, it actually just made me remember that we were on a mission to actually get a Squirtle of our own. So why don't we complete that mission? Oh, that's right, because no Psyducks want to spawn. I don't know why. I was on a three catch combo. And now there's just zero Psyducks to be found, so... Just look at that Venonat walking animation! Oh my gosh, that is just too good! I love it. I'm right now getting a nice little Bellsprout streak going because that seems to be the most common Pokémon to spawn here. Um, and once we get to around 10, I'm gonna try to use a lure and see if that helps. And our own Bellsprout's gonna hit level 20 off of that. I don't actually know what level Bellsprout evolves at, but I feel like it's around 20. Okay, never mind. <gasps> oh my gosh! There it is! We didn't even need to use the lure! After the 11th Bellsprout, Squirtle has appeared! And it's a tiny one, too. I don't know if that really affects its, like, strength or anything, but it will definitely give us more experience. So let's first off go for the Raspberry. And as you can see, that circle is definitely a little dark, so I think I'm gonna go for a Great Ball, uh, just in case. We definitely don't want to miss out on this Squirtle here. And there we go, a great capture. Uh, I wanted to update you guys, by the way, on my throwing situation, because last episode, we missed out on a Chansey, because the Pokeball kept going off the side of the screen. Uh, but that only ever happened with a different Joy-Con that I was using since my usual one ran out of battery. And ever since I went back to my usual one, it's been A-OK, -okay. so maybe you guys having the issue, try using a different Joy-Con or maybe your left one, and let me know if it's still 
has that issue, but there we go. Squirtle has been caught. New Pokemon technique bonus, size bonus, great throw, first throw, every throw basically uh, was bonus experience there. And as you can see, I switched up my team to try and train up some Pokemon that, you know, could use the levels basically. Uh, Venonat, Bellsprout, and both of the Nidorans there. But the most important thing... Whoa, actually that's gonna be the level they evolve at too. Okay, so I guess we're delaying the Squirtle in the Pokedex because we're gonna get a whole different Pokemon in the Pokedex registered. And it is gonna be Nidorino. But there it is, double evolution, baby! This is crazy! I said last episode we had a double evolution, or I guess the one before that. Uh, but this time it's an official double evolution, happening off of the same battle, or capture in this case. And this time, we're gonna get Nidorina! It's definitely a little more relaxing than uh, the Nidorino description, but triple dex entry, baby. We got Squirtle in there as well. I almost forgot, but the Tiny Turtle Pokemon, the final of the trio of Kanto starters. It shoots water at prey while in the water, withdraws into its shell when in danger. Just like a good old, old turtle boy. And that is gonna be it, guys. We caught pretty much everything that I wanted to. Well, actually, pretty much everything that we can get in this route. And we got the cherry on top of evolving both of those Nidorans there. So our Pokedex is coming along quite nicely. And in the next episode, we will continue that by heading down to Vermilion City and beyond. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.